Not good. More good. Not good. More good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Between the Sharks. On tonight's episode, we're gonna talk about a misfire under load. How to define that and how to solve it, quick. So first things first, a misfire is an ignition related issue, not a fuel related issue. Otherwise, they would call that a miss fuel. You might be thinking to yourself, hey Jack, that's easy for you to say because you already found your problem and can retroactively diagnose it as a misfire and not a fuel related issue. How am I supposed to know the difference? My car just runs like garbage under throttle trying to go up a hill. I'm gonna help you on that too. So the symptoms are something like this. It idles fine. You can rev it up and it still doesn't happen. You may hear a little bit of a miss, but for the most part, it's okay. But then let's say you're leaving a stoplight. It just doesn't feel like it has any power. It sounds uneven, pops a little bit, all out of the tailpipe is what we're talking about here. Same thing if you're going up a hill or just trying to pass or accelerate even on flat ground. But if you're cruising under light throttle, you may not really experience it. At least that's my experience. I've actually had the same problem multiple times with the same symptoms and still misdiagnosed it this last time. So hopefully future me will see this video when I'm Googling misfire under load in the future and I find the forums that have all the same wrong answers. You're welcome, future me. In my experience, the difference between an ignition related problem and a fuel related problem, when it was fuel related, I could replicate the symptoms in park or neutral by revving the engine. When it was ignition related, I could rev the engine, I could put it in neutral, I could put it in park, I could hit the gas, nothing. But as soon as I was driving the car and the engine was actually pulling the weight around, it would manifest itself. I've had both come up in the last month. Fuel version and the fire version happened out of the blue. Both vehicles were driven regularly and then one day they just started not running well. So if you suspect a misfire under load, first place to check. If you're running HEI, check right under here. Look at that. So right there, you can see that it is a little bit melty and a little bit fried. It's supposed to look like that. The rotor is also showing evidence of cookitude. It's supposed to look like that. So for me, the car sat over the weekend. I drove it on Friday, I drove it on Monday. Monday, I had an issue. So in our bad cap, the cap is now toast and the coil has fried the cap. So I changed the cap and the coil that is inherent to an HEI cap and changed the rotor. It gets better, but then it gets worse quickly. So the next place I had to go was the ignition control module. That's where it gets weird. My expertise on this is non-existent, but my limited knowledge will tell me that the coil acting up could indeed fry the ignition control module and i'd imagine vice versa and then the pickup coil is yet a whole other part that could cause similar symptoms so if you swap this and then you swap this and it's still doing it you may need to swap this for me i was headed to replace the ignition control module the center part of this in this distributor which was in the van but as i did the this plastic started to crack and then I thought, man, that pickup coil could be really old. And then I thought, based on my limited knowledge, seeing this capacitor slash condenser, which I believe is for radio interference in an HEI, but I'm not 100% sure, this style doesn't really exist anymore, at least I don't think. Feel free to put it in the comments if you know of anybody making a distributor like that. Oops. Typically, this is more of the style you see these days. So I thought to myself, it's late. I gotta be at work in the morning. I grabbed a new distributor off the shelf that had a new control module and everything else in it because I had those. And I've got those on the shelf in spades because every engine I buy because someone's doing an LS swap always comes with an HEI. And then when I use the motors, I usually put points in and the HEI goes on the shelf. So if you have that issue under load with an HEI, it's most likely in here and it will be easy to see. Even if you don't know what you're looking for, that looks a little bit cooked. So does that. Not good, more good. Not good, more good. Now hopefully if the cat rotor coil situation doesn't solve your problem, you are one ignition module away. In our case, this I believe to be the original distributor that I got with the van that 
was original to the 79 305 that was in the van when I bought it. <laughs> it outlasted most serviceable items, I would say. But now if you're thinking, man, I don't have HEI, I got a real hot rod. I'm running points. I got you there too. The place you're gonna see this manifest is probably right in your coil. Fancy Wubin flashlight. So you can see down in there, it's pretty crusty because this thing's been on the shelf for quite some time. This thing's awesome. But what you need to note in here is how far down the contact actually is. It's a little over a quarter of an inch. So you have your coil wire, right? When coil, when wires come in the box, they often come looking like this. Well, if you jam an end looking like this onto your coil, the rubber boot may fit tightly over the top of the coil and it will feel secure, but your contact is not going to be in where it should be making contact. Then the spark is gonna to have to create an arc to jump the gap. What you're aiming for is a situation kind of like that to start. Jam it down in, and then you can push the boot down as you like to. You can hear it even click in like a regular spark plug. And if you're saying to yourself, man, my situation is similar but different. What would it be if it was a carburetor? I got you. Assuming you're running an Edelbrock because you're not trying to impress your neighbors with a Holly. These little Venturi dudes right here are your boosters. So when you open the throttle, the little tube guys sticking out send gas running down. And I'm not saying they atomize the gas. I mean, you'll kind of see it like a trickling water hose. That's where your fuel comes from under load with partially open throttle. These things only open when you're trying to impress somebody on the internet. So if you can get your car running, poke your eyeballs down there, open the throttles a little bit by goosing it, you should see fuel running. If it's super, super inconsistent or not coming out of one side or the other, that may be some evidence that you should poke your head in there and see how dirty it is. Quick cleaning will usually solve that right away. So I hope this video has gotten you a little bit closer to solving your problem and getting your car back on the road in a happy, healthy running condition. If this video helped you out, please mash that little thumbs up button. That's what helps me out. It's childish, but it's true. Good luck on your projects out there. We'll see you next time on Between the Sharks.